Voy, voy a empezar la grabación. I'm going to start the recording because I know some people will definitely be watching today. We got some folks who can't come. Um, but, pero, bienvenidos y bienvenidas. Espero que ustedes estén bien. I hope you guys are all well. Por favor. Okay. <laughs> Muy bien. Ah, bueno. Uh, vamos a practicar. Uh, le... Los, los invito a, a preguntarme cosas sobre los vídeos. Vamos a hacer muchas cosas. Uh, aquí viene Dorothy, momentito. Uh, bueno. Uh, oye, vamos a practicar un poquito con C. Vamos a empezar un poquito con esta cosa de C. Uh, les puedo compartir. I can share with you so that you can find this because you may have this um you may have this as a file you want to pull two screens down if you use your computer to do that i know some people do that instead of printing it out because you know waste of paper and all that so this little practice that we had mm -hmm. with say yeah uh i want you to take a few minutes before we get started to locate where that is uh, you may have printed it out, in which case go see if you can grab it, you know, maybe in a different part of your desk. Uh, you may need to find where you saved that on your screen to bring up two screens at once. Uh, we will start with that, I think, first. And, uh, and then we're going to take a look at some uses of say with this article that we have. Oh, this is a big point. Como para ciegos. This looks like for, you know, blind people. I've got to make that smaller later. Uh, but um, the, our article on um, things we would, 14 lessons, 14 lecciones, see? ¿sí? So those are the two things that if you get them at, as a, a computer file or as printed out, you may want to take a look and, and find that. Uh, vamos a practicar primero un poquito. Uh, antes de conversar, vamos a conversar también de la, los lugares que, que queremos visitar más que nada y la, los lugares que no queremos visitar para, para nada. <laughs> uh, places that you want to go, absolutely places that you don't want to go. We'll take that a little bit after our, our, our se practice. Uh, pero vamos a empezar un poquito con se. Y eh, esos ejemplos de C son muy ejemplos muy específicos. El uso de C como expresión impersonal, ¿no? Uh, que es muy fácil. You know, you only use this as C with a singular verb or C as a plural verb. And that's all you use it as. And these are used in signs. People use them in conversation. They use them all the time. Um, I think I want to let you go into small groups to work this just a little bit. And I'm not going to give you a lot of time, probably really five minutes, because you have some time to look at this before cinco minutos and kind of see what information you got on that and uh, come back and see if you had any questions. Pero el primero, vamos a hacer el... El primer ejemplo, todos juntos. We'll do the first one together so that you got the rhythm set in your mind. The museum closes at five. Diríamos mm -hmm. que, what would we say? Te cierto a las uh, cinco. Sí. Uh, <laughs> de, uh, uh, el perrito, el pobre perrito. Se cierra el museo a las cinco. Sí. Se cierra la, la manera más común. The really, the most frequent way people would typically say this or put it on a sign would be, se cierra el museo, o, o el museo se cierra. Uh, se puede cambiar el orden un poquito de las palabras. Se cierra el museo las cinco, okay? And the others are going to follow suit pretty much from this. I do want to give you some time to practice that maybe in small groups a little bit, un poquito. Quizás en hmm, tres grupos. Tres, vamos a ver. Uh, bien, sí. Y después vamos a regresar con preguntas, ¿ok? You'll need to hit your little join button. 
but this will let you speak with people in a little bit of smaller group setting to start out. Oh, hola, Patricia. Pat, would it not let you in the other group? Oh, and you're you're muted. Take yourself off of mute, please. My internet keeps coming in and out. Oh, okay. I probably messed you up because um, no, no, no. It, yeah. it no. In the summer, it does this. Airplanes go over. Oh my God. Okay. Uh, Podemos practicar. You can practice with me. Puedes practicar conmigo. Okay. ¿Cómo se dice, por ejemplo, si you observe nature in a park? You meaning not you personally, but any old you, right? Okay. So why, I had a question though, on the museum, mm -hmm. why did you have to put museum? Um, because you're talking about the museum and you're talking about a place that closes. So okay. museum versus any other building versus an office versus, um, you know, a bank. All right, so you want to clarify that because I didn't realize you were supposed to put yeah. it down. Yeah, well, you could, but you know, I mean, if it was already understood per, from a previous okay. part of the conversation, you might leave it out. It is it's possible. It is totally possible that that could happen. Okay. See, okay. okay. Um, Como se dice you observe nature in a park? Um, say, um, observa, observa, uh, nature in la, el parque. Sí, se observa la naturaleza. And we'll call nature la naturaleza en el parque. Okay. Sí, bien. Bueno, vale. Ah, uh, ooh, mail is delivered every day. Um, say, um, uh, arriba? <laughs> well, uh, we're going to use entregar. Oh, entregar. En entregar means to turn, oh, estás aquí. Dorothy, sí, dime. Oh, and Dorothy, you need to take yourself off of me. There you go. Oh, I still can't hear you. No. Oh, no. You, oh, you can't. Okay. I cannot hear you. I can see your mouth moving. If you want to type a, a message to me in chat box, do that. Oh, or, and it says you're unmuted, but I definitely cannot hear you. So there might be some setting on your computer that needs a little... Jiggling around, I don't know. Can I be up? <gasps> there you go. Can you hear me now? Okay. <laughs> okay. Gracias. Thank you for coming back in here. Okay, you get to practice with me and, and with Pat, y con Patricia. <laughs> uh, we're, we're, we're just working on number three, numero tres. We haven't gotten very far, okay? Sí. So if, if we use entregar, entregar, for deliver, because entregar means you turn in, you hand something over, right? Se entrega, por ejemplo, se entrega el correo. El correo cada día. Se entrega el correo cada día. Bien? Bien. Okay. If you didn't know how to say mail, like mail service, el correo, if you said, well, hmm, I'm going to look for a word I know that talks about things that are in the mail. So if you plugged in a word like las cartas, yeah. 
yeah. which isn't exactly right, but you know, it gets the idea across. You then have to change it to se entregan las cartas, se entregan las cartas uh, cada día. Miguel, hola. Hola. <laughs> uh, I, I am in a hotel room in Tucson and there's an engineer fixing our shower, so I might have to mute. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know what? I'm going to just turn it over to you guys. We're going to look at numero cuatro. You wait here. And it doesn't mean you personally. It means you as an anybody. Dorotea, dinos algo. Tell us that. Se espera aquí. Se espera aquí. Se espera aquí. Se espera aquí. Exactamente. Muy bien. Muy bien. Okay. Uh, you, uh, the question is... Could you conjugate that as a, a, a mandato, like say a spere aquí, because you're. I'm, I'm, well, you could. I mean, okay, so you wait here is not a command. Oh, hola, Janet. <laughs> Face got a little messed up. Come on in, take yourself off the of mute. We had some issues. Um, on, on many levels. It's one of those nights. Okay. Uh, um, okay. So you could get the same idea across, Miguel, if you gave that as a command, you know, espere. But probably if you're talking to somebody you don't know from Adam, then it would be espere aquí. If you're talking to more than one person at once and you gave it as a command, it would be esperen aquí. Talking to somebody you know real well, espera aquí. But se espera aquí, you wait here, meaning any old person who happened to need to be in this place, this is where they would be. Like you see in the bank. Okay. Se espera aquí. And I'm sorry that everybody got kind of bumped out, but we had some internet issues. So, oh, pobre Dorotea, a donde, a donde se fue? Where'd she go off to? Hopefully she didn't get bumped off again. She had some sound issues as well. Okay, you send the information. Uh, you send the information by mail. Oh. Uh, por correo. Okay. Por correo, sí. Or by email, perdón. Por. Sí. Se puede decir por email, por. Uh, Por correo electrónico, etc. Um, ¿Cómo se dice you send? Enviar. Um, it'll probably be enviar, enviar or mandar, either one. Uh, se envía la información. Uh, o se manda por email o por correo electrónico. Aquí viene Dorothea. Here comes Dorothy again. And we'll, we'll do a quick once over on these once we get everybody back. Uh, in the gym, in the gym, you practice yoga. En el gimnasio se practica yoga. Sí. En el gimnasio. Se practica el, el, es el yoga, creo que sí, aunque terminan, ah, I think it is el yoga. Ah, uh, bien. Uh, you can learn a lot when you listen. Se aprende mucho cuando se escucha. Se aprende mucho cuando se escucha, sí, o se puede. Se puede. Okay. Se puede también. Uh, se puede aprender mucho uh, cuando se escucha. Exacto. Uh, you enter here, you go in this way. Se entra, se entra aquí. Se entra aquí. Se entra aquí. Se entra, se entra, se entra aquí. Uh, se, se puede por decir aquí. se entra por aquí, por aquí. Mm -hmm. It would be really, really common to use this as por aquí. Uh, por a, and what's the difference between just saying aquí and por aquí, por aquí, 
I don't know, it's just what they say, right? Yeah, por aquí, around here. Por aquí right. kind of indicates around here, you know, in this area. Uh, drinking alcohol is forbidden. Una idea, se y prohibir. We have to use prohibir. Se prohibe. Prohibe. Beber alcohol. Beber alcohol. Exacto, muy bien. Uh, bread is served with dinner. Se serve. Exacto. La pan por el seno. El pan, el pan. Ah, el pan con la cena. El Se pan. sirve el pan con la cena. Exacto, sí. Walmart sells everything. Se vende Walmart uh, todo, todos. Yeah, todo. and, and uh, you know, I think really what most people would say is se vende de todo. Oh, de todo. Se vende de todo. Uh, that's a little turn of phrase. Se vende de todo en Walmart. And I'll, I'll put this on share screen when we get everybody back. Se vende de todo. De todo. Uh, uh, se vende todo. You could say that se vende todo, but uh, quite often, for some reason, it's expressed as se vende de todo. Se vende de todo. E, 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 el último, la última frase. It's forbidden to take photos. And we're going to use the prohibir verb again. Se prohibe sacar fotos. Se prohibe, sí. Se prohibe sacar o se prohibe tomar. E, oh. Es igual. Se prohibe sacar fotos o uh, se prohibe uh, tomar fotos. Son, son iguales. Son eh, términos eh, iguales. Sí, oh, dime. Lo siento. Uh, no, no. Posible, uh, dice hacer fotos. Ah, uh, eso no tanto, no. Sacar fotos, tomar fotos, pero no se usa hacer tanto con fotos. Gracias. Hacer fotos, you know, if you were actually doing the developing, you know, like in the old fashioned when we actually had a roll of film, un rollo, <laughs> um, then they might have used it there. Um, but um usually not i said with that we're going to do a share screen real quickly so you can see these um and there may be some other things you might want to ask about but mm -hmm. these would be the most common right se cierra el museo a las cinco se observa la naturaleza and you would use it as la naturaleza um en el parque se entrega el correo cada día or se entregan las cartas, if you're just talking about letters, right? Cada día, se espera aquí, you wait here. Uh, uh, se envía la información por uh, email. And here, instead of saying se, se envía, you might use se manda. Se manda la información. Uh, so there are two verbs that mean to send, mandar, magnífico, enviar. Es igual, son sinónimos, they are synonyms, no importa cuál se usa, doesn't matter which one you use. Uh, Entrega. Um, oh, uh, entregar, oh, pues, sí, sí. Uh, enviar es más como send. Entregar es más como, más como deliver or hand over. Hand over, but you'd get the idea across with entregar. I mean, it would sirve, sirve, it works. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Bien, okay. Uh, uh, si, uh, bueno, en el gimnasio se practica el yoga or, and you can swing the el gimnasio to the back. Doesn't matter where you put that el in el gimnasio phrase. Miguel, tienes pregunta? I, I thought that I have seen signs like say prohibido. Uh, oh, yes, yes, okay, okay, so here's what you might have seen on the sign, and I'm going to make myself an extra line for this, uh, ooh, no con eso, donde esta, donde esta, uh, okay, 
Está prohibido beber alcohol. Uh, también mm. está bien. That's okay too. Okay, so it's not using say, it's, it's just using the you could, you could, está prohibido, it is forbidden. Es prohibido, pues sí, yeah. Uh, you could still even see it that way. It, it might be any of those ways that you might see it. Uh, and down at the bottom here, we had some easy ones with se sirve, you know, this is serves, se vende. Y se vende de todo, se vende de todo, that de todo is just kind of what they say quite often when they mean everything. It means, it's like saying a little bit of this and a little bit of that is de todo. <laughs> okay. Um, y se prohíbe sacar fotos, se prohíbe tomar fotos, son equivalentes. Bien. Um, the thing to remember with se prohíbe is that that stays singular if you're doing an activity. Because when we pair it up with doing something in infinitive, se prohíbe is going to stay singular. Okay. Vale. I, um, uh, ¿tienen ustedes alguna pregunta? Do you have any other question about anything off sí. of this list? Okay, dime, por favor. N número cuatro. Uh, cuatro, cuatro. Uh, ¿Es un mandato? Uh, um, no, estrictamente, pero se puede decir, you could express this as a command and absolutely get the same idea across. So then depending on who you're talking to, right? Yeah. It could be espera, and Miguel had the same question. Espera mm -hmm. or espere or esperen, or right? Esperate, no, esperate. Uh, esperate. Oh, oh, like uno? Mm -hmm. uh, I have seen that written. I have not really heard people say it that way a lot. Con, ni con oh, niños. No. Con niños. Oh, con dicen. niños. Con esperan, niños. Esperen. Que, que, que esperan aquí. Sí. Maybe with que. Que esperan aquí. Uh, esperan aquí. Uh, se espera aquí just makes it very impersonal. Meaning you wait here or if. John Doe comes, strolls along, you know, any old person waits here. This is the place. This is the place for everybody. Is expressed with that the idea of se espera aquí. It just makes it, uh, it makes it you in the most general sense of the word you, okay. meaning any Thanks. person. Okay, bien. Hay otra pregunta. So, so Marilyn, would it be say espere aquí? Or, or you wouldn't use that? No, uh, espere, if, if you wanted to give it as a command, like wait here. But mm -hmm. if I say it as, well, somebody says, where do you wait? Right? Where do you wait? Oh, you wait here. It's that kind of idea. And if you're using it just to talk about any person in general, se espera aquí is probably the most accurate way to translate that idea. But if you expressed it as a command instead, it's certainly something that people would understand and would get the right idea from. Well, I think it was the excl exclamation point that got us there. So. Oh, well, see, and maybe I shouldn't have put that. In. You're right. My choice of punctuation, Roy, might be a little bit mm -hmm. misguided. Let's take that. That, out. Was, my okay. that was my signal. <laughs> no, tienes razón. Tienes razón. Muchas veces cuando hay una exclamación, usamos ese, esa forma. Y es muy común. Okay. Bien. Uh, bueno, entonces. Es, es fácil de entender, es, is this easy to understand? Mm -hmm. That we use the se just in a really, really general sense to say you, any old person does this, okay? And this is used a lot, not just on signs, but by people talking to each other all the time. So that's one of the uses of, of se. Um, we're going to see very soon 
uh, some other examples. So I want to take a look now, if you can pull this up, this article, oh, and I've got to make this smaller because right now the way it is, it's like braille quality. <laughs> and, and sadly, sadly, I don't know. I guess I would have to change these all to, really, you know, the who said the quote, we don't really need all those in great big terms. But when I made it big, it all went big. Okay. Es difícil engrandecer todo. Hay que engrandecer todo o nada. Okay. Um, and what I, <laughs> muy, muy gigante. Son letras gigantes. Uh -huh. Y no se, se necesita. We don't really need to do that. Um, so I'm going to go through real quickly and, and make these smaller so they're not so distracting. Uh, antes de la clase de español en inglés uh, en uh, New York Times. Ah, uh, uh, sí. I sí. Eso es, sí. Bueno. Um, okay. Voy a cambiar todo aquí. Uh, you know, in case you don't have this with you, at least you can see it on the screen. What I want us to do is take a quick look through and you've got, if you have any questions about what any of these meant, feel free to interject and interrupt as you, as your heart so desires to uh, ask any questions. These are just the names of the people who had, whom they had quoted. Uh, Así, uh, las citas de... El origen, el origen de las citas, the origin of the quotes. Una cita también quiere decir quote. Cita quiere decir en, en español, uh, quiere decir uh, a, a, an appointment or a date. Y cita también quiere decir quote. Like we use the word citation. Mm -hmm. We have that nice handy word citation. And so that mm -hmm. in that sense, Cita is definitely a, uh, as citation, uh, it is a cognate. But if we use the word cita, meaning appointment, of course, then it's not a cognate anymore. Uh, que curioso. Y momentito, vamos a ver. And we're going to see lots of uses of se, but we're going to take a look at maybe some things that are impersonal, say, and others are not. And we're going to kind of see how say is used in different settings. And now you can see the, the letters, but maybe don't have all those quotes and such huge letters. 14 elecciones para la próxima pandemia. Ay, porque si... Ah, estamos seguros de que, de que habrá... habrá Otra pandemia, desgraciadamente. Ok. Y, uh, el primer ejemplo aquí tenemos se equivocó. Se equivocar. And this one is not the imper impersonal, se, el se impersonal. Um, ¿En qué se equivocó Estados Unidos al manejar uh, la pandemia? How was the United States, how did the United States make a mistake? Equivocarse is one of the verbs, and this is one of the other uses of se. Sometimes it's not strictly a reflexive verb like lavarse las manos, not a reflexive verb like se levanta, se sienta, but it is a reflexive verb but it just has a special meaning that isn't necessarily the person doing the action and receiving the action. And it has a special meaning. Equivocarse es to be mistaken, to make an error, to make a mistake. Es equivocarse. And it is used as a reflexive. It just is. So, entonces la pregunta Sería en inglés algo como, how did the United States go wrong managing? Or how did it make a mistake managing? Yeah. Entienden, ¿no? Mm -hmm. Okay. ¿Hay algún término aquí que, que no es obvio o no? El resto. Did the rest of that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Sí. Okay. Uh, 
A ver, prepararse para lo inimaginable. Uh, oh, Teresa, ¿tienes algo? Repens repensarse. Oh, repensar. Oh, gracias, sí. Repensarse. Rethink. Es reflexivo. Es, es, sí. Sí. Uh, It's interesting. Should, oh, oh, this one, this one really, what should one go back and rethink? Reconsider. How should one rethink? So this one really is a little more impersonal. Repensar mm -hmm. is to rethink. So this is a little more impersonal. You're going to find most of these are either the special meaning verbs or they're the impersonal say, verbs. They're, they kind of go one way or the other. Uh, but they're going to flip-flop all over the place. Prepararse es estrictamente reflexivo, to prepare oneself. ¿Sí? Prepararse aquí es lo normal del reflexivo, to prepare oneself, to get oneself ready. Eh, el uso clásico del reflexivo. Sí, Dorotea, dime. Es posible y dice, se preparar. Uh, sí, se puede. You could. Uh, they chose to make, leave this as an infinitive. Uh, uh, preparing oneself for the unimaginable. Um, I think because it's a title, porque es titu titular, sí. Ok, ok. Ah. Uh, son uh, lecciones de pandémico. Uh, así, to prepare oneself. That's one of the lessons, is to prepare oneself for the unimaginable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Es, sí. Uh, that's the because they're answering that question. What have, what the 14 things to learn? Y, perdón, in your question, la pregunta es, otra no, no. vez? Actually, it's not a question. It's like they, they asked the question, what are the 14 things to learn from the pandemic? To take ah. So this is the title of one of the 14 things. To sí. For the unimaginable. Hey, hey, sorry, sí, sí. And, and when we say things in very, very general terms, often they'll put it in an infinitive form. So these are like the bullet points. E, e, the, the, the bold terms are, are starting our bullet points, essentially, right? The, and I... Y, y, y no los conté. I did not count them to see if they really have 14. <laughs> okay. Uh, la ciencia. Oh, la ciencia en primer lugar. Hay, um, pues, hay dos más. Hay dos más. Do, en el párrafo, quedarse y uh, para... Uh, ah, se pareciera. Uh, ah, sí, 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 sí. Los veo, sí, aquí. Ok. Ah, quedarse abajo, abajo. pareciera um, se, uh, oh parecerse es to resemble mm -hmm. this one is not the impersonal say reflexivo uh, uh, es verdaderamente reflexivo pa parecer is to seem parecerse means to look like mm -hmm. something else to resemble something else. So, pasamos décadas planeando para una pandemia que se pareciera a los virus que ya conocíamos. Uh, we spent decades planning for uh, a pandemic that might resemble, might look like uh, a virus that we already knew about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, parecerse aquí es estrictamente reflexivo to look like to resemble something else. We use this, parecerse, we use most frequently really to talk about you looking like somebody in your family. This is the way kids really learn it because people will say things like, me parezco a mi madre, I look like my mom. Oh, te pareces a tu papá. You look like your dad. And then they're saying you resemble your father. You look like your dad. You seem like your dad. Uh, so in, in general conversation every day, this verb parecerse is usually used to say you look like somebody in your family. Okay. 
Ah, y busco, busco el otro verbo aquí de cada cultura. De órdenes, okay. órdenes de quedarse. Uh, o de quedarse. Aquí en ese párrafo. ¿Dónde, sí. ¿dónde tenemos a uh, quedarse? Quedarse. Más. Uh, uh, oh, oh, yeah, quedarse aquí. Sí, 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 sí. Exacto, sí. Y quedarse aquí es otra vez reflexivo, puramente reflexivo. Staying, remaining in a place. Quedarse, quedarse en casa, to stay at home. Quedarse, to stay in a place. Y es lo que quiere decir. But, you know, quedarse como reflexivo is, doesn't have that meaning of to do this to yourself. It's just stay. Just stay, right? Like lavarse las manos or levantarse. But quedarse is just to stay at home. Okay. And in my haste to go through, I probably have missed some. So feel free to point those out. Uh, la ciencia en primer lugar. Ah, pa, 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 un fracaso catastrófico. Ok. Ah, aquí. Se iría. Se iría. Would go away. Y la frase entera es, desde el principio de la pandemia, el presidente Donald Trump dijo que el virus se iría. That the virus would go away. Irse. Es también reflexivo aquí, no es impersonal, se iría, it would go away. And irse just tags on that idea of take off or go away. It, ta it tags on the idea of away. Um, okay. Uh, que no necesitábamos tomar precauciones. Se ridiculizaron las mascarillas. Ah, Masks were ridiculed. This is an impersonal say. Masks were made fun of, is what they're trying to get across. They were poo pooed, <laughs> we might say in very, very conversational English. Uh, se ridiculizaron is a kind of highfalutin way of saying that. They were ridiculed. Masks were ridiculed. Social distancing was ridiculed. Okay, and this is an impersonal. Uh, it, it's kind of almost like a fake, um, pardon me, use the word fake, a fake uh, passive voice. Mm. So here is another thing, and it is actually kind of a little subset of that se impersonal. Sometimes we use the se impersonal um, where we might use passive voice in English. So why do we use passive voice? Passive voice means that the, the noun was acted upon. It doesn't really tell us who did it at all. Like, um, oh, this was taken by a student of mine. Instead of saying, my student took this picture and now it's active voice, right? Mi estudiante tomó esta foto. So to make it into a kind of a fake way of saying passive voice, it would be, se tomó esta foto mi estudiante, okay? Um, it is a way of saying the photo was taken. The photo isn't doing anything. We're just saying it was acted upon. It was taken by somebody else. And so in other words, there is an agent, somebody else who actually did this activity. But sometimes they mention the agent and sometimes we don't tell who actually did it. So when you hear somebody saying something like this phrase, se ridiculizaron, we're saying, masks were ridiculed. We might not be saying who specifically did it. A bunch of amorphous people, some group, you know, we're not naming who. We're just saying they were poo-pooed, okay? Lies were told. Lies were told. <laughs> Mistakes were made. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's that exact idea. So this said, when you hear that, it it, it, it still does, you know, again, here, it doesn't tell you who did it. It's just saying, well, we're not naming names, but this was done. 
Okay. Um, la restricción estricta de las pruebas. Y aquí pruebas son tests. So here pruebas are using in the sense of testing the wonderful swab that went up the nose. That's what they mean by la prueba, the actual tests that were taken for analysis, okay? La restricción estricta de las pruebas que solo se realizaban a quienes habían viajado a China, which were only done to people. Realizar is to make something happen. It doesn't mean to realize like, wow, that dawned on me. <laughs> realizar in this sense is to make uh, make something actually happen. So this was only done to people. This was, uh, this, these tests were only performed. You know, we might express this as these tests were only performed on people who had been traveling out of the country. So realizar is kind of a, a problematic verb because it looks, it's a false friend. It looks like it's a cognate, but it's not. Um, so this is impersonal again, is that how they um, yeah, this is impersonal again. These things were done, these tests were taken, were done on people. These tests were done on people who had traveled. Or were done for people who had traveled. Very careful way of writing when you don't want to directly criticize a power that be. And so is. And radiologists yes. use this, like no nodules were seen because they think that it's going to get them out of the lawyer's office if they miss a nodule. And but there you go. Because lawyers see through that. Yeah. And, and, um, and oftentimes in a form, and this is an important thing to know too, sometimes these say in persona are used in very common conversation, but they're very, very frequently used in formal writing, like for a newspaper article. Really, really common. For, for professional writing, for, um, for writing in a newspaper or a magazine, it's very common to see these being used. Um, and when they talk about reactivos here, they're talking about the reagents that were needed for the tests. So it does look, well, and that's what reagents are, right? Sí, yeah. bien, sabes, tú mejor. Mejor mm -hmm. que nosotros. Uh, you would know that better than we do. Uh, uh, they cause a reaction and, you know, whereas we call them reagents, the term in Spanish is just, you know, that's, that would be the chemical term, reactivos. Uh, oh, los reactivos para las pruebas pronto se agotaron en todo el país. They were exhausted, but we would probably say they ran out of reagents. So an easier way to express that idea in English would be they ran out of them. So reflexive in this case? Um, oh, this is passive. Creo que, mm, creo que no. I think here it's more. Um, hmm, que buena pregunta. Tengo que buscar. I'm going to have to look that one up, right? I'm going to look that up for sure and see if agotar is listed separately as agotarse. Agotar is to run out to, uh, you know, there's a run on something, you don't have enough. I'm going to have to look that one up and get back to you on that. Right, but you can uh, also exhaust yourself or tire out. After. You could, right, yeah. You could use it that way too. Exacto, right. Uh, agotarse would be to get yourself all worn out because you hiked too far, you did too much exercise, you were sick and you shouldn't have been doing whatever you were doing, that kind of thing. Um, that is right. But I'm going to check that out for sure, Roy, and get back to you on that. Okay. Uh, prepararse aquí reflexivo, to prepare oneself. Okay. Uh, okay. A ver. Ah. Ooh. Algo muy difícil. Se difundiera. Se difundiera. Wow. There's a really, really tough, a past subjunctive. So let's look at the whole big context. Está claro. It's clear. Está claro que el gobierno de China, it's clear that the government of China, uh, si reservó. Yes, they did 
hold back. The seat there is kind of like saying yes. Uh, or we might say they really did hold back or they, it's true that they held back. Reservó información sobre el virus y que los funcionarios no querían que la información se difundiera. And se difundiera does come from uh, a reflexive verb. They didn't want the information to get out into the public. That's what that means. Mm -hmm. uh, to, we, we, we could say that as they didn't want it to be published. They didn't want it to be known. They didn't want the information to get out, to be spread. Okay, there are different ways we might express that verb, but any of those ideas in English would conform to that that little phrase of se difundiera. But it is it is past subjunctive, so like so that that information got out, right? Got out. Right. Okay. And so why did they use that past subjunctive? Es buena pregunta, Roy. They didn't want no querían que. They didn't want that the information leaked. Uh, yeah, leaked. We might say that too. <laughs> Because then it's out there, yeah? It is reflexivo. Si. Okay. Si. Uh, to spread that out, yeah. So, but, but it goes into past subjunctive be because we've got no querían que. Los funcionarios no querían que. They didn't want it because that is a past desire. Not they don't want it to leak or be published but they didn't want. And that why it's, that's why it goes into se difundiera. Oye. Ah, uh, ooh, es, es algo muy polémico. This is something very controversial right now, right? Because we still do not know a lot about this. Uh, necesitamos realmente tener una conversación más amplia, a wider conversation, más allá de la China, right? Beyond that whole thing. Um, Okay. Y eso que me parece muy importante, la nacionalización de las respuestas creo ha sido increíblemente dañina. Uh, nationalizing or making this a national issue for getting these answers has been really, really damaging. Very, uh, very damaging. We have to look at these things that, you know, look at everybody. Um, ¿Hay algo reflexivo aquí? Creo que no. no. Oh, si ah, este término la tasa, ¿qué quiere decir la tasa? La tasa de mortalidad. Rate. Rate. Just, sí. Rate. Sí. La tasa de mortalidad would be the mortality rate. Uh, the scale of death. Okay. A ver, bueno. Uh, uh, esto me gusta muchísimo. Decidir quién recibe, oh, quién recibe tratamiento primero. Who gets treatment first? En este párrafo. Bien, sí. Uh, desde agosto, cuando se dio a conocer el plan. Uh, Se dio a, cono a, a conocer. ¿Qué quiere decir? Flexit, conocerse. Uh, y, sí. Uh, dar a conocer. When, when this plan was put out there. When it was hatched, no, no. conceived, made known. proposed, made known. Right. El plan de distribución. Ideado, meaning it came up as an idea that they're putting it down on paper now, see. Uh, han sobrevivido dos principios generales. Cuando la oferta de vacunas es limitada, atacar los focos de mortalidad y conservar el sistema de salud. Um, okay. Now I'm confused. Okay. Say, say, deal, I'll Now it sounds like 
it's not reflexive. It sounds like this is passive because when the plan was given to know, when it was gotten out. When, when it was, yeah, when it was thought up and put on paper. Uh, see, yeah, that might be. Uh, dar a conocer is, is kind of a, and that all kind of has to hang together. Mm. Uh, that all has to hang together. You can't take the se dio apart from the a conocer. It's a whole question. Yeah, it's a whole phrase that hangs together. So, so Marilyn, does this, does this originate from darse or conocerse? Where, where does the se come in? Yeah. Um, it, well, yeah, this one is a little bit problematic because I think really dar a conocer, you got to take that separate. And sit, yeah, when, when the plan was thought up and put on paper to be implemented is what they're talking about. So dar a conocer is one issue and the, the se, yeah, makes it kind of passive. See. If dar a conocer is basically implemented, then yeah, that's when the plan was implemented. Yeah, so it's kind of... Uh, Kind of passive here again. Uh, no dejarlo. And here again, you'll notice because it's in a title, they left it as an infinitive. Okay, that came up before. No dejarlo en uh, mano de los estados. Don't leave it in the hands of states. Okay. Uh, tenemos 50 estados. No es una manera muy eficaz de, de, de gestionar. This is not a really uh, great way to manage things is what this is going to talk about. ¿Sí? Um, en un país con las características de Estados Unidos conformado por, uh, por 50 entidades individuales y más de... 330 millones de habitantes. Sí, que hay too, too, uh, too many people taking the lead going in different directions, right? So that's what this is all talking about. Uh, hay ciertas cosas en común que se necesitan. And here, this is definitely kind of a passive voice thing. There are certain things in common that are needed, meaning everybody needs them, right? Que se necesitan. Certain things, certain common things, certain common actions are needed. Algo de colaboración, cooperación, sinergia entre el gobierno federal y los estados. So here, this is definitely a passive kind of thing. Ah, pa, 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 pa. <laughs> Saben que es alto a los mensajes con, contradictorios. Alto es. Cool. Stop. Oh. Yeah. Loud. Alto. Stop with the contradictory messages. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this alto doesn't mean tall. <laughs> This is the alto that's enough already. Yeah. Well, how is that different? How is that different from para? Like para. Um, oh, you know, it's buena pregunta. Sometimes on the actual red, is that a hexagonal or an octagonal sign? I don't know. I never remember. Hexagonal. You know what I'm talking about. Like then the red stop sign, right? Some countries you see it as you know, para or se para even. Some places you see alto written on there. You see both interchangeably. Uh, but I think some regions just choose to use one word and some choose to use another. So even on the stop sign itself, that means literally stop, you might see, see either term used. They can, I mean, they're, they are synonymous terms. So, it's a choice of using a one word that means this or a different word. That's that's it. Um, pa, pa, pa. No tenemos la palabra se aquí, verdad? Mm -hmm. No. Tam tamiz tamizaje. That's a very strange word. First oh, sentence. tamizaje. Um, 
Tamizaje, tamizaje. Uh, uh, sí, es una, una palabra bastante rara. Uh, es, es, um, um, ay. Uh, sorry, I found it. Um, se me fue, se me fue. Tamizaje. Screening. Screening, screening. eso sí. Mm -hmm. Screening. Gracias. De nada. Tamizaje, yeah, screening, es screening. But it sounds it sounds so exotic, like uh, like a like a Basque thing or like an Indian thing or something. Um, um having a J E on the end of a word is not that unusual, and the stamisaje would really be something that would be used. I'm pretty sure in medical terminology, pretty strictly. Uh, what the actual origin of that word is, I cannot tell you. But okay, for por ejemplo, uh, Roy, uh, if you want to say learning as a noun, you know, uh, the learning of this concept is done at this age. Aprendizaje, A J E, aprendizaje. So, aje as a, a little suffix tagged on to a word to turn it into a noun is well, kind of like mensaje right above yeah. that mensaje. Ah, you, there you go mensaje yeah as simple as that right right um, so I i'm gonna have to look later you know that t-a-m-i tami and maybe even with the z attached uh probably has a special meaning i'm gonna kind of dig deep and see if I, I can find that for you um but screening here and you know you would not hear tamisaje used a lot a lot of i mean you know a lot of this comes into being from using that medical terminology which just you're talking as a tourist on the street you're that's not going to be a common word for you to use Carolyn? Uh, sí. pa paisaje paisaje igual sí A-J-E, paisaje, igual. Yeah. Marilyn. Common suffix, sí. En mi, en mi diccionario, tamizaje solamente ocurre con prenatal. Prenatal. Tamizaje prenatal. Prenatal screening. Oh, prenatal screening. There you go. Así es. So, yeah, medical terminology. Not a screen you set up in a room. <laughs> screening, yeah, screening. Es, es un término para los médicos, los, uh, los enfermeros y todo eso. Uh, invertir en los números es investing the numbers. in the numbers, right? Uh, la falta de inversión en salud pública. The lack of falta, falta, indicates a lacking, a, a needing something, but not having it. Uh, the lack of investment is what they're talking about. Inversión aquí es investment. Uh, lack of investment in public health. Okay. Um, y no tenemos aquí. Agilidad en el tratamiento. Agility, quickness, nimbleness in treatment, mm -hmm. right? See, ¿Sí? ah, otra vez quedarse. Oh, pero aquí en lugar de quedarse. Ah, this quedarse is a little bit different than the other quedarse. The other quedarse was quedarse en casa, and that was strictly saying stay in a place. In the in that case, en casa, right? Ah. Uh, Que quedarse, when we pair it up with a description, changes the meaning a little bit. And there, quedarse is talking about a state of change, like what we studied more recently. Uh, and estancados would mean be stuck. So instead of becoming stuck, here quedarse is become. Instead of getting stuck or becoming stuck in pay for service, that's what they're talking about here. And here we've got like the se prohibe, se puede aceptar. 
one can, one can, one can, or you can, you can accept responsibility. Um, okay. A ver, a ver. Una, pre una pregunta. Sí, sí, dime. Uh, tanto clínica como financiera. Ah, eh, sí, okay. As much clinically as monetarily. Oh, oh, because when I put this in my translator, it says um, both clinical and financial. And that, thought, right. How is, sure. How is, how is right. homo and? You know? Right. Uh, this is the way of expressing that both of these things are, are hanging together. Tanto clinica. Okay. Uh, we use tanto como to give equal comparisons. So they're saying clinically just as much as financially both clinically and financially equally. Very good, thank you. So tanto como puts them on an, on an even level, not making one more important than the other. Yeah? I, was, I was trying to translate literally and that made it difficult. And, yeah, and all those words have to hang together to get that whole idea. So we, we might just say in English the word both, yeah, absolutely. Absolutamente. Okay. No dejemos que la raza y las cl clases social determinen quién vive y quién muere. Yeah. We cannot allow race and social class to determine who lives and who dies. Here we've got a very nice se trata de phrase. Ooh. Es, es buen término. Se trata de un tema que solía ser muy académico. Uh, tratarse de means to be about or to talk about something in particular. You know, if I say, uh, Juego de Tronos, uh, el, la, serie, la serie Juego de Tronos se trata de la fantasía. It's a show about fantasy, right? Um, Se trata de un tema que solía ser muy académico. It's about a topic or a theme, but a topic probably that uh, used to be very academic. Oh, yes, yes, poverty. You know, they're waving that off. There are always the poor, right? This is almost, um, almost can be read both ways though, because I, I, when I read this, I thought it is treated as a topic only to be uh, yeah see sí. yeah well it looked like it was passive see sí. not tratarse. um yeah you probably could yeah se trata de se trata de is usually indicating this is about yeah but yeah we we could take it that way it could be interpreted that way you bet um se aborden we Se aborden. Ooh. Se aborden, se aborden. And I need to look, my, look up my uh, abordar. They put that into a reflexive. I even need to go back. Um, abordar. Approach. Approach. Yeah. Discuss. Yeah, this is real academic kind mm -hmm. of stuff, right? Um, mm -hmm. these social determinants, these social factors are approached in a certain way. Um, I had addressed in my- in Addressed, my same idea, C, si, address, C. Si. Uh, prestarse atención is to pay attention. See. Si? Aquí. That's another yeah. one of the things where you could read this as passive. Like, uh, it, it, if one does not pay attention, si. Si no se presta atención a las políticas de empleo, vivienda y educación. If one, if, if you don't, yeah, if you don't pay attention, and here política does not mean politics. Here, politica means policies. 
So política is one of those words that might have a couple of different meanings depending on the context. In este contexto, in this context, it's uh, las políticas como policies of employment, uh, uh, places to live, vivienda, see? Uh, housing, housing, vivienda, right? Educación. Um, Cuando se produce una pandemia, when a pandemic is produced, when it appears, right? So this is very, very passive voice kind of thing. Se produce. Okay. A ver. Uh, ooh. Cuanto más tenemos? Because I want to make sure we get to our travel thing here. Uh, no discriminar por la, la edad. Sí, ok. Um, sí, codo. Mira la hora. I'm taking a look at our, 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 uh, our time here. I want to make sure I don't spend too much more time. I'm going to leave it here for now and see if we need to come back to this a little bit later because I want to give us enough time to do some um, uh, speaking on your little assignment too. And I'm looking at my watch and I'm saying if, if I spend yeah. any more time on this today, it's going to eat up the whole clock. Uh, I want you to have a ch an opportunity to talk or for us to have an opportunity to talk uh, a little bit about, uh, you know, este tema. Vamos a hablar de este tema de lugares de viajar, ¿no? And I wanted to make sure that I was leaving 20 minutes to do that, right? Uh, Recuerdan ustedes, and we'll come back to this. We'll come back to this and take a look at those again. Um, but I do want to make sure that I, I leave enough time for us to talk about uh, la, el tema, our theme, ¿sí? Uh, un lugar donde que, que, que no que un lugar, un sitio, un país, una ciudad, lo que sea, whatever it may be, uh, que, que no quieren visitar o si sí, de verdad quieren visitar. Personalmente, yo quiero visitar algún día Italia. Me encantaría visitar Italia. No sé por qué. Por el arte, me imagino, ¿no? Principalmente por el arte, because of the art, por el arte. Uh, y es semejante a España, entonces tengo interés en Italia. Uh, no, no tengo ningún interés en viajar a la India. Ooh. Y hay, hay una razón, una sola razón. Hay demasiada gente. <risa> eh, es un lugar con es siempre siempre está eh, un lugar donde siempre está lleno de personas de llena de mucha gente por todas partes todo el tiempo todo el tiempo y, y, y la presión es enorme. Y, y la pobreza es muy deprimida, entonces no tengo mucho interés en viajar a la India. ¿Qué, qué, qué opinan ustedes? ¿Qué opinan ustedes? Un lugar que, que sí, realmente, de verdad, uh, quieren visitar y otro lugar que no. ¿Cuáles son sus opiniones? Sí, Dorotea, empieza, por favor. No, me... No, no viajar mm, a espacio exter ex, uh, exterior. Oh, espacio. Sí. Al espacio. Sí, sí. yo también. Ni yo Eso tampoco. Que... Sí, <risa> y, 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 y yo, yo tampoco. tampoco. <risa> ¿Qué Eso es que es quiere, quiere ir al espacio. Bueno, Escribí. buen viaje, Jeff. <risa> Entonces me imagino pero el peligro, ¿no? Y, y es difícil. Físicamente sería difícil, ¿no? Para una persona más joven, 
que nosotros quizás sería un poquito más fácil, pero... Y, y Dorotea, ¿es por el pe peligro principalmente? Peligro, sí, y uh, las alturas. Y no me gustan los viajes en avión. Ah, oh, entonces y aún peor, no tengo, even worse. No tengo el dinero. Oh, oh. Sí, cuesta un ojo de la cara, ¿no? Cuesta un ojo de la cara. Sería muy aventuroso, pero... Uy, muy, muy, muy difícil. Muy difícil. Oh, no okay. tienen belleza. ¿Eh? No, no tienen belleza. Ah. Hay tantos lugares en, en, en la tierra que están muy pues, bella. Me imagino que... que ¿Alguien cree que las estrellas son bellas? La, la luna. La luna es, muy es de polvo, nada más que polvo. <ríe> Piedras y polvo. Y polvo. ¿no? Piedras y polvo. Eso es. Eso es. Ok. Más lugares. Hay más lugares. Espacio exterior. Y hay, 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 hay una encuesta, there's a survey, hay una encuesta que, en que todos dicen que vaya, que, que vaya Jeff y no, no regresen, no regresen, no, no regresen. Ah. Uh, I, I prepared this in advance. Hay yeah. otro sitio que no quieren visitar o no. Viaja en nuestra pasión. Uh, los lugares a los que más queremos ir son los lugares a los que solemos ir los, lo antes posible. La pandi pandemia había dejado la mayoría de nuestros planes en suspenso durante más de un año. Uh, mm -hmm. Tuvimos que cancelar un viaje a Nueva Zelanda para caminar por Milford Track. Uh, así que ahora eso está la parte superior en nuestra lista. Sin embargo, Nueva Zelanda todavía está cerrado a los extranjeros. Sí. Todavía. Y el artículo que tengo para ustedes para la semana que viene ah, se trata de, se trata de uh, las dificultades de viajar en estos momentos. Aunque, aunque algunos países eh, están abiertos. Uh, no es estrictamente abierto como, como antes. Hay restricciones, uh, hay muchísimas cosas que, que los pasajeros tienen que, que hacer uh, uh, antes de viajar, antes de regresar uh, al, al país de origen y, y todo eso. Es difícil, es difícil. Uh, hay demasiados riesgos para viajar con muchos lugares en el sí. mundo. Sí. Uh, Janet, estás aquí en, en dos lugares. Ok. Ok. okay. okay. Algo más. O oh, otro lugar donde, donde que, que, que sí quieren visitar. ¿Quieren hablar de eso no? Sí, yo tengo. Ah, Roy. Sí, me gustaría ir a Indonesia, uh. Uh, tal vez a Bali o incluso mejor a otra, a otra isla remota de Indonesia o Malasia. ¿Malasia? Uh, sí, sí. Nu nunca he estado allí, pero creo, creo que me encantaría vivir allí durante al menos uh, unos, unos meses. Unos meses, uh, de verdad. Meses. Por, sí, por, me, por me, el clima, Roy, o por me, la me cultura. Encanta, me, 
Me encanta caminar uh, por las zonas de la selva tropical uh, to, the, to the rainforest uh, y estar rodeado de toda la uh, exuberante vegetación. Oh, sí, claro. Um, y me gustaría mucho visitar hermosas playas remotas y también comer todas las maravillosas comidas picantes de Indonesia. Ah, sí. La, sí, la, la comida la, cier es cierto que es parte, parte de la cultura en general, sí. ¿no? Y la cultura musulmana. Oh, sí. Interesante. Muy sí. Interesante. Exótica. C cultura, paisaje, tiene un poquito de todo, sí. Gastronomía, sí. historia, right. historia, right. claro. Right. Necesita hablar con mi esposa. Ella es, ella es de Malaysia. Oh, de veras. Wow. Fantástico. Yeah. Um, yo, uh, yo, he, yo he estado en, en Mal Malaysia uh, hasta, hasta tres, tres años. Cuatro oh. años. ¿En Kuala Lumpur? Um, no, uh, Langkawi. Uh, um, 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 Georgetown, Penai, and uh, Kuala Lumpur. Part of our honeymoon que... was in Langkawi. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> uh, ¿De qué tamaño es la ciudad de Kuala Lumpur? Es la capital, ¿no? La capital es, es grande. Muy grande? ¿Como, como sí. de tamaño de, de qué? ¿Como el tamaño oh, de Chicago? Singapur, o... Singapur uh, um, no sé, es grande, ¿eh? Como, como Bangkok. Bastante, una ciudad bastante moderna, ¿no? Sí. sí. Millions of people. Millions. Con, con las torres. Muchos edificios. ¿Y cuán, cuántas horas duraría, would it last, duraría un vuelo entre Estados Unidos y Malasia? Uh, puede, puede ser... Um, 13 horas. 13 horas. Uh, 13 horas. De Los Ángeles. 12. Pero habría, ha, habría una escala. There would be a stopover. Habría una escala en, en Hawaii o. Um, a, antes de llegar en, en Asia, ¿verdad? Sí, a, a Bangkok. Para, para mí. Um, entonces, ¿hay, ¿hay vuelos directos? ¿Hay vuelos directos? A, a Bangkok, Thailand. Thailand. Yeah. Ah, ok. Um, Pero, uy, tres horas. Y, um, tai, Taipei. Trece horas, son muchas, son muchas, ¿verdad? Sí, Pero vale la pena. Mismo, es lo mismo uh, 13 horas a uh, Tokio. También. Ah. Okay. De Los Ángeles. Ok, muy bien. Bueno, ¿hay, hay otro lugar de que quieran hablar o no? Me gustaría. Sí, sí. Me Patricia. Me gustaría navegar por las islas griegas. Uh. La, la comida es muy delicioso. Y las vista, vistas uh, son hermosas. Los lugares históricos. Lugares me, históricos por todas partes, ¿no? Me fascina. Fascina. No? Me, me fascina. Los lugares históricos me fascinan. Ok. Me fascinan. They fascinate me. me fascina. Y me el, fascina. Mar, el mar Mediterráneo es así azul y cálido. No me gustaría uh, viajar. You're gonna laugh at this one. Norte Corean. Ah, <laughs> Corea del Norte. Se dice uh, Corea del Norte. Corea del no Norte. Me, no me gusta Kim Jong. <laughs> No comida, ni claro. comida con pan, 
no sé de cualquier lugares a ver. Eso entiendo perfectamente, ¿no? Uh, me imagino que los turistas estadounidenses no se sienten muy bienvenidos estos días en Corea del Norte, ¿no? Y claro, no, no, no pueden dar de comer a la gente que vive allá, entonces sería casi imposible obtener un, 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 una comida fantástica. En... You have a tour guide 24/7. <laughs> You're in Cuba too, though. You had to have a tour guide in Cuba 24/7. <laughs> Pero saben ustedes en en dónde en España no sé por qué en España también aquí en, en Estados Unidos un poquito es muy popular la música coreana del sur la música de la música pop que se dice love así eh, yeah. ten, sí uh, la música pop de Corea del Sur es muy popular con los jóvenes en España con los jóvenes en en partes de Estados Unidos también yeah. sí Yeah. Uh -huh. Entonces, Muy popular. Corea del Sur es otra cosa que, claro, que Corea del Norte, Corea del Norte, Corea, Corea del Sur tiene, tiene de todo también, sí, Moon. Uh, bueno, uh, me gusta muchísimo, Pea, gracias. Uh, yeah. Bueno, otras cosas, otros lugares. ¿Algo? Sí, sí, yo sí. Tengo amigos de Colombia y como Luisito, me quisiera uh, subir los se, ah. 700 um, um, escalones. Escalones, sí. <ríe> al uh, Peñol. Exacto, exacto. Uh, voy a, uh, sí, 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 sí. Uh, me imagino mis sí, amigos. Es, esta cosa, pero ¿qué? Qué interesante. Un uh, momentito, tengo que. Uh, no funciona. Pero, pero, saben, sí, a uh, esto de, del video de, de la semana pasada, ¿verdad? Sí, eh, eh, este pe, uh, Peñol, sí, un, como, como una montaña, pero. Una sola piedra enorme, ¿sí? Uh, sería muy, muy, uh, un viaje muy raro. Uh, y, uh, perdón, no funciona. ¿Tienen ustedes uh, alguna pregunta sobre, sobre el video de Luisito en Colombia o no? Yes, I do. Um, He uses a okay. lot of little slang terms. Mm -hmm. And he'll, he'll, he'll grab uh, slang from Spain, from Colombia, from wherever he is, you know, even though he is Mexican. Oh, oh perdón, Pat. Okay. Um, I didn't understand him, but I understood Juan real well. He was easy. But I, just in case I missed something, I put on the English translation. Oh, uh, okay. After I listened. And afterwards, they kept saying, uncle, uncle, uncle. Tío. On a lot of the words. Oh, sí, yeah. tío. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Pero tío en ese sentido no es uncle. Tío es, es jerga, es slang, es muy coloquial. Tío es guy. Oh, okay. Like girl. Tía es gal, chick, girl. Okay. Pero tío es muy específico a España. So that first one. He was throwing out all kinds of terms. Some of them quite kind of, yeah, pretty vulgar, but it's <laughs> what they do. Um, it's what they, es, es lo que se hace con, en todos los días. Uh, um, he does throw out a lot of terms. There's another little term he does at the end, and I should put on my subtitle, see if I can find it for you. Oh, it's clocking terribly. Um, y no recuerdo exactamente. Every once in a while, he'll throw in some term. And often it's just something that means this guy, you know, or um, uh, there, was, there was a term, he, I know he was using it at the end, right at the sign off. 
pero... Ah. Sí, estaba hablando de la recreación como uh, tenían un, un, una plaza que construyeron una, una plaza exactamente como el pueblo an, eh, anterior, eh, el viejo, el antiguo pueblo que destruyeron para, para crear el lago, ¿verdad? ¿Comprenden? Sí. Uh, ¿Y dónde está? Uh, oh, 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 oh. Uh, eh, oh. Brutal aquí no es brutal. La he pasado brutal, muy coloquial. Uh, I had an awesome time. Brutal aquí is like saying, wow, truly awesome. Well, he talks about the taste of one of those drinks as being brutal, which brutal. I thought. Brutal. Wow, yeah, what a great beer. Yeah, what a fab beer. Yeah, what a oh. great beer. Um, <laughs> ah, parceros. Este término también, parceros. Uh, Mis parceros, mis parceras. And sometimes in these subtitles, they misspell a few things. Sometimes they're not completely 100% accurate. Parceros is, again, kind of a slang term just for saying guys and gals, bros, you know. Um, so he throws out a lot of slang. But, you know, that's kind of interesting because this really, really had to do a lot with the, the slang that young people use. And sometimes it's kind of good to know that that, you know, and, and he was talking about in the first video that they did about Spain, not the one about Colombia, how he was mistaking a term that they were using, you know, that that majo word, that it really was like more pendejo. <laughs> he was used to, it sounded like a Mexican term that he was used to, you know, somebody calling somebody pendejo. It's right. like, no, 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 it's not that at all. You know, uh, uh, you know, majo is, like, uh, wow, you're great. You're, you know, Michael, wow, you're super, you're a fabulous guy. You're a great guy. You're a good guy. Good that, guy, you know, that, muy majo. Is that majete versus ojete? Yeah, and that was just, it, it's just, they changed the word a little bit. Yeah, they were saying, wow, you are truly great. You are truly great. So he'll throw out these terms, some of them, uh, things, mexicanizos, things he's used to using being a Mexican himself, some of them he'll he'll rob from whatever little country he is visiting. Uh, and he does a lot of that. Um, ¿Les gustó el video de Luisito? ¿O no? Sí. 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 Uh, the other thing that was kind of interesting uh, that he talked about was sort of this um, lamenting the, oh yeah, the uh, commercialization of a place. Um, okay. La, la cerveza, sí, las cervezas de la región uh, que serían muy, muy importantes para los jóvenes. That would be really important for the young people. Pero también, también después es la cerveza. ¿Qué, qué, qué? ¿Dónde? Uh, oh, well, he talked about these. Did, ¿Entendieron? Did you guys understand that every family has their own little mm -hmm. paintings? Okay, and these are particular to whoever, uh, you know, lives in or works in that building. Uh, todavía busco. I'm still looking for. Quizás está aquí. Oh, sí. Esto, this thing of what he had this idea it was going to be great. You know, you'll see birds flying around at the top. And what does he find? A la cima, at the top. A la cima, right at the top. And the doors. Music. Un centro comercial, a little shopping mm -hmm. center at the top. Mm -hmm. Dancing, yeah.
mini mini piedra de, <laughs> de peñon, mini piedra, get a get a mini rock, right? So, you know, you go all the way up to the top, those 700 plus stairs, and you go up there to listen to reggaeton. Uh, so he thought this was very, cursi, you know, they would call, uh, you know, kitsch, something is very kitschy, this would be very kitschy, right? We might say, muy cursi, cursi, es como decir, you know, it's a uh, like twist trap quality kind of thing once you get to the top. But you know, still, he still gives it a shout out that it's super great place to look at. Uh, so, okay. Uh, Fructifera mina de oro. This is a a little a little golden egg. You know, this is a, you you mine this. This is you, you make money off of this. Una fructífera mina de oro. Uh, uh, so, you know, this is a beautiful place, but somebody's making money off it. That's <laughs> right. You have the, the side gig that you, uh, um, and you know, and the, the ticket to go up there was not cheap either, right? Some 50 some bucks. Uh, más de 50, uh, 50 dólares, ¿verdad? Oh, Pero said, la historia oh, del lugar es muy interesante. Marilyn? Sí. I thought he said it was 50 um 50,000 Colombian dollars he said that was like equivalent to 5 or 6 dollars oh i thought he had said it was 56 dollars i thought he had said it was 50 some dollars i'll i'll go yeah. back and listen to that again. He, says, he says he says uh, cinco seis which means cinco or seis okay cinco or seis yeah okay translate well, to 56 pero bastante interesante no uh bueno hay más preguntas any other questions about these hay más preguntas o no no, no, okay, vale. Um, para la próxima semana, next week, I am going to have a different video video for you. I'm still deciding actually between a, a, a couple which one we'll do, but um, uh, we'll, we'll have I will have a different article for you to read about travel, um, de, de viajar, las dificultades con viajar y, y qué pasa con con viajar, uh, perdón, uh, qué pasa con viajar y uh, otro video, no, todavía no he decidido, I still have not decided between two videos yet, so I'll make a decision on that next week. And we'll, we'll wrap up with that, you know, kind of long article from our, our 14, 14, 14 reasons, right? Uh, we'll, we'll wrap up with the end of that because I wanted to make sure that you had a chance to talk about um, you know, your travel do's and don'ts. Okay. Y eso es todo, creo, ¿no? ¿Hay más o no para esta noche? No, no más. Okay. No. Oh. Vale, fantástico. Entonces, uh, vamos a hablar más la semana que viene. Espero que ustedes tengan buen fin de semana. Uh, okay. Hace... No, no hace fresco exactamente, pero la temperatura es mejor que, que la semana pasada, ¿no? Uh -huh. Y sí. ojalá que, ojalá que no haga tanto calor porque esta semana tengo que cuidar a la mascota, a, a las mascotas de mi vecino. Tengo que dar una vuelta, dar un paseo dos veces al día con el perrito, no es perrito, con el perro enorme de mi vecino. Y <ríe> no quiero caminar ni dar un paseo con un perro enorme cuando, cuando hace mucho calor. Ok, pero nos vemos la, uh, la próxima semana, ¿verdad? Sí. Sí. Ok, vale, magnífico. Nos vemos pronto, nos vemos. Nos vemos. Buen fin de. Sí, buen fin de, buen fin de, claro.